So it says, front runner to replace Daniel Craig as James Bond is revealed. That front runner is Aaron Taylor Johnson. Hmm. He, uh, uh, most recently, I think most people know him from Bullet Train. He yes. was the Tangerine in, in Bullet good. Train. He, he, he was. was very suave in that role. And yeah. I think that's maybe why they thought he's a good candidate. Yeah. But like... People are going to complain no matter what. Everyone has their favorite person that yep. they want cast in this role. People were talking about Killian Murphy, yep. Michael mm. Fassbender. Killian Murphy's a horrible idea. I will stand no. by that one forever. I do not want Dead uh, Eyes as James Bond. I dude, don't. No, no, no. But that's why I was just going to push back. I loved uh, Aaron in Bullet Train. But yeah. He was so that, good in Bullet Train. The yes. reason he was so good is why I think he would be a bad James Bond. James Bond needs to be this fancy pot dude and he was too much of a this is a joke you know which i thought he played that masterfully masterfully but Loved daniel him craig in is as like benoit blanc he's a comedic That's not james character Bond, though. and that was after james the Bond. idea here is though is that they think he's that capable he, of both though. he was sure, also sure, he was sure. good in tenet he was also i mean i don't even remember like it was so long ago that his avengers like as quicksilver i like don't remember that at all he was also i found out at one point up for uh, Spider-Man for like the 2012 huh. Spider-Man that uh, that Andrew Garfield played. Huh. So he was going to be Spider-Man in that, and then did, didn't get okay. cast. So I saw a ton of mixed reactions to this rumor. I hope that the rumor is true, though, because I didn't want James Bond to yeah. get race swapped, gender swapped, whatever else you can think of swapped. Uh, I I am Elba happy with the James idea. Bond. Okay, I'm gonna push back on that. But everyone think- has their pet celebrity yes. that they want. To sure, be the next course. James think, Bond, and they're going to complain the no matter what. I, another argument to your point about like the the quirky part is he's from Kick Ass. Have you ever yeah. seen Kick Ass? Okay, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay he's the, he was he was the kid in Kick Ass. So I think Idris Elba would be a good bad guy. I think he should be the villain sure. in the next James Bond movie. He's too old now. They made it a point Maybe. to saying no, yeah. no, he is. They they said like when you sign on for that role, you don't sign on for one movie. You said you're in there for 10, you 15 are years. James Bond, yeah. Daniel Craig got hired to do uh, Casino Royale in two thousand. Four or five. The movie came out in two thousand six. You're in it for the long. How old was he haul. then? He was in his late thirty or mid thirties, I think, at oh, that wow. time. Okay, so uh, thirty two is a good age to yes. start. And I think you have to a be lot of, of a the people age. complaining that it wasn't Henry Cavill and people that feel mm. like Henry Cavill just can't catch a W these days. Obviously, Aaron Taylor Johnson has a leg up on him in being like seven or yeah. more years younger than him. And uh, I saw another complaint that, like, we need a Lemon and Tangerine spinoff. Like, this isn't what we asked for, but cool. And they liked him so much in that role that they feel this is going to take him away from it. Um, Weirdly, a lot of people were hating on Aaron Taylor Johnson's wife, seemingly just for for her age. His wife is a director that's 20 years older than him. Who directed Fifty Fifty Shades Shades of of Grey. She's 55 (laughs) years old and he is 32, so that is quite a large age gap. But they were being stepdaughter that's only seven years old. It's not gonna last. One person said, uh, but they've been married since 2012. Like it seems to be going strong. So they're saying, if now if we can just get him away from the crypt keeper. They're also saying he needs to meet with some divorce lawyers. That's mean. Uh, that's, that's mean, dude. <laughs> just a lot of comments about his wife, which were completely unrelated to the rumor that we're talking yeah. about. Uh, another person said, I'm looking forward to the first Bond that can rightfully call one of his villains a C word. Um, I saw another tweet that said, they I thought as soon anyways, as an Indian they guy. In, in, they love that word in the UK, so they can use that word. Yeah. They're fine. Another person said, I thought as soon as an Indian guy became prime minister, you were legally required to cast Dev Patel. Oh, I, I look, I actually thought, like, I really do still think that there's a strong possibility that Reggae Jean Page gets cast in this role. Because there's I this do. rumor that because Bridgerton has halted yeah. the third season yeah. and they're doing that to rewrite the script, yeah. that they're actually rewriting Reggae John Page out of a lot of the script so that he has time to do this. For the people that are new here, my, my pet logic here is that I think it was the big ask. There was a bunch of articles written at one point that says, why does James Bond have to be a dude? Why does James Bond sure. have to be straight? Why does James Bond have to not be in a wheelchair? The idea here being that if you if you pitch all those ridiculous concepts early, then when they just hire somebody that's not a, uh, a regular, like a straight right 
white British guy. You settle. You settle and yeah. you're like, okay, that's fine. I have like, I know most people want him to be blonde haired or, or dark haired, blue eyed, whatever. It doesn't matter to me as much as long as they don't talk about his race as part of the character because that's not relevant right. to the story. I wouldn't be, have a problem with reggae Jean Page. I think Aaron Taylor Johnson is a better fit. Uh, I mean, as, I would have a problem with it about I James Bond Tom getting Hardy. race swapped because I think of it as an intentional erasure of a yep. white male lead, which is a concerted effort happening in Hollywood right now. They've sufficiently shown the audiences yeah. that they do not care about their input, whether the person they are suggesting is a POC or they're white. They aren't listening to what audiences want now anyway. No, so absolutely. we would get very lucky to have a white straight male lead. The funny thing is, is back when back when Daniel Craig got hired, they made a huge deal about the fact that he had light hair. Like that was the that hmm. was the argument. The, they're like he doesn't like he's James Bond does not have light because he's got like a light blonde, like light brown hair. Right, right, I, guess, right. I guess is he considered? Blonde? I mean, you could always Dirty dye blonde. it anyway. Yeah, but they yeah. made a big sure, deal. Yeah. They made a big deal about that. And the same thing is like, look, casting is a huge thing now. When Ben Affleck got cast as Batman, they said, "Don't go on the internet for at least two weeks." It will it will drive you nuts, drive and I think down. it's yeah. it's funny if you're a celebrity now. Just when I look at comment sections for anything like on Instagram, even Instagram's far less poisonous and toxic than Twitter is, right? You see random celebrities mentioned all the time, like tagged in videos that are being awful to them. You just detach at a certain point. You can't pay attention. Well, to Well, I know that was on. a big uh, when when Elon Musk started the whole Twitter blue thing, and anyone could become verified. It would ruin like. Uh, certain influencers feeds because yeah. you can filter by verified accounts mm -hmm. but now everyone's verified so then all of a sudden you have these high profile people just the floodgates were opened and they saw yeah. all that slander and there's a and difference that. between the there's no difference between the appearance of a legacy verification and a twitter blue verification so it's not at first glance i think unless there you is, click on exactly the tab but that takes so much effort exactly like, the other thing the other thing here is that um i, I would like tom meissen do you know who tom meissen is mm -hmm. tom meissen was in a show called sleepy hollow with okay. Nicole Bahari. You really, were just telling me was, that yeah, I should okay. go watch that. It's, it's, he's, he's tall, British dude. He's actually probably taller than... I, I was surprised. Daniel Craig's only 5'10". That, that, that makes sense. That's like, I, I was imagining... Yeah. I always imagine Bond is, is over six feet. Something like this. But Aaron Taylor Johnson, he had a meeting with Barbara Broccoli. Yes, that is the name. Barbara Broccoli. Barbara Albert Broccoli. Broccoli. Yeah, Albert Broccoli's wife. Uh, had a meeting with him. They said they had a, he had a secret audition last year. I know that the audition process for Bond films is strenuous and intensive because they have to test out a lot of different people. And now, probably more than any other time in history, it's relevant because you can't just cast who you want and, and be gone with it. If it was big when Michael Keaton was getting cast, and it was another thing, when Michael Keaton got cast, Cast as Batman, they made a big deal about that. They said he wasn't right for the role, right. so it's always been a thing. It's just more recent that it has to do with somebody in the chat goes still taller than you, Brett. Yes, still <laughs> taller than me. You well, are correct, uh, but it's saying it's it's just relevant for kind of more annoyingly like culture war reasons now. The one thing about this, though, I, I've seen a few articles over the past handful of weeks about who might be the next James Bond, and I will say for the most part. All the people that get tabbed or the rumors swirl around, I can see them in the role. I think James Bond might be a standalone franchise in that regard that most of it's like, yeah, maybe he's not the best fit, but I could see him pulling it off. Like, also, they go through different directors, so it's very possible that with one director, you get a better performance than another right. director. That's my other question here is, will Martin Campbell be the one that they bring back to launch the new franchise? Martin Campbell launched both the Pierce Brosnan Bond films and the Daniel Craig Bond films. He did both GoldenEye and Casino Royale. Will they get him back on, you know, on board to do that film? They can't get Kerry Fukunaga. Remember when we had to do all the stuff about Kerry Fukunaga being creepy Some on set of uh, vague story Spectre. about him being creepy in relationships with the women on with the women on set. What was yeah. your favorite Daniel Craig Bond film? Casino Royale. By really? Far. Oh yeah. Uh, I, I'm, I'm I prefer Pierce Brosnan. I okay. love I love all the Brosnan Brosnan films, including the awful Die Another Day. So like. <laughs> With you being a fan of those films and being somewhat invested in what happens to this character, I think you have all the more reason to oppose them race or gender swapping this character because you know it's a step-by-step -step process. Yeah. They normalize things over time so that you're assimilated to the idea that there's nothing essential about James Bond. Yeah, I mean, I, like you're... 
I admit that I'm still one of those people. Like I, I give it the. I, I try to give as much as possible and not be as judgmental as possible. You're right. I believe that there's a certain segment of Hollywood, especially at the producer level that wants to make these changes fundamentally. Should I support it? No, but I also think that it's inevitable in a lot of cases. Maybe that's a defeatist attitude in a lot of ways. I don't think that it has to be inevitable. It's It, it feels inevitable to me. So the idea here is like, if they're going to do it, can we get the, who, who in the meantime, can we get the best performance out of? But if we keep Aaron Taylor Johnson, we don't have to worry about that. Wait, I also don't think, James Bond, I don't think the race is super important for James Bond particularly. Uh, a lot of people believe it is because he comes from British uh, he, he's not British royalty but he's part it's of aristocracy. Uh, he's aristocracy well whether so it's, like, it's important to the character or not it's clearly like the race of James Bond is clearly more important to the people who want it to change than the people sure. who don't care sure like you like, know I like guess I saw so many people coping and seething and like having a literal tantrum in response to just the rumor that Aaron Taylor Johnson will get cast simply because he's not a POC. Like, I literally saw someone tweet, why, yeah. why, why, another right. non-POC? They don't even think of him as white. They think of him as non-POC. Because right, 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 right. it's all the same to them. It's a wash. It also proves the entitlement. Yes. Like, not only that they think that it's going to happen, but if it doesn't, it's the wrong move. And that they just assume now that they're going to get their way. And the funny thing is... is Because th they always do. The reason why, I make, why this is important, too, the reason why it matters is because they don't go after any franchise that's why they leave reacher alone that's why they don't care about the terminalist they care about culturally relevant franchises and i will concede to you on that mary that it is extremely important to them because they want the things that are bastions of our culture in the past right so superheroes were something people grew up with anything sci-fi anything that's relevant to kids that influences young the adult next fiction generation, young animated adult fiction. series if this it would be less about that and it would be more about destroying traditional male roles i, I don't think yeah. it would be i don't think it would be about influencing the kids because kids i don't think are the ones going to care about james bond as much as it is middle-aged dudes in their 40s their 30s and their 40s sure. and up but they don't care about reacher and those other ones because they're not as culturally they don't have relevant. the cachet exactly like james those, bond has i'm just saying like let's level with the logic they're using Using. Yeah. Representation is important. Uh, young black children need to see on screen that they can be like this strong lead character. Okay, so if we erase all of the white male leads, what is that going to teach yeah. the young white children? watching media that is dominated by race swapped characters they would have to go and watch the and other stuff further, that's not culturally relevant yeah. and make that culturally relevant further than that like i saw someone well actually a lot of people saying the next bond after this is going to be a woman or a gay man like sorry to tell you but this is incremental right. so if the intent change. is to just check off boxes to seem noble then yes that's wrong but i think if if daniel Kalu uh kaluuya that was another person yeah. I've seen his name in the hat. She would tell Edgy Or Idris mentioned. Elba. If they auditioned and they were truly the best Bond-like person for the job, completely okay with me. Now, if they chose that guy because it checks off a box, yeah, that's stupid. It's, it's impossible Be to prove it. Impossible. Because okay. It's impossible to prove now They can anyways. cast this right. person because they think they'll do the best job. Yeah. And it's a huge bonus that they're not white. Yeah. Like, that's always the case. It's right? like when I they guess. were talking about Little Mermaid. They were talking about, we did colorblind casting. Like, did you really? And then did we pushed the really? idea on her that we're going to incorporate her dreadlocks in the movie. Yes. Like, it's always just an added bonus for them. Yeah. If they can find someone who's, who's a singer and an actress and we get diversity points like it's always on the table it's also funny too because a lot of people are talking about how they basically gave 007 the, the code name 007 to lashana lynch's character in the last bond movie before you know obviously before the end i won't give away the ending to that movie but that's not the first time this has happened um they were going to do when Halle Berry played, um, I forget her character's name, Sphinx. Uh, she, she, her character, Jinx, Sphinx, Jinx in Die Another Day. They were like astroturfing her to like, she's going to get her own spin off. I'm like, except for nobody in the world other than me likes the movie Die Another Day. So, how is that even possible when like Halle Berry had credit at that time because Halle Berry's a big name, but nobody really cares about Lashana Lynch? Like, in that role, Halle Berry makes the role not. The character 
in this, Lashana Lynch is made by the character. So it doesn't even really matter if they want to make a female James Bond. They could just do a spin-off if they wanted to. They won't because it won't ever sell. That's right. probably what will happen now that Who MGM, says they care about it selling? I'm saying like now that MGM has purchased uh, has been purchased by Amazon Prime, there is every possibility that you end up getting a spin-off of a female character. They could have done a money penny sp- look, they did a Alfred Pennyworth series on HBO Max that a lot of people in the chat hated on me for saying like who actually wanted to watch that like I get it we love the character of Alfred but there's a reason why some characters are meant to be supporting roles right right? like there's every possibility now that they give a character like Lashana Lynch's character or give Naomi Harris as Moneypenny her own spinoff working at MI6 it's all about office politics at MI6 and you put it on Amazon Prime right you can do that and I, and I think this does this issue about casting the next James Bond. It all goes back to the original issue that there's no creativity anymore. Yeah. Everything's a re envisioning. Everything's a reimagining. Right. If yeah. you like create a new character in the James Bond universe, yeah. you're saying it wouldn't sell. That's an argument. I mean, sell is but a moot point. You got to try. You can't, you can't it, score if you don't shoot. Sell is a moot know? point because when it's on streaming, it's like, how do you prove that it sold? But they yeah. just because they subscribe doesn't mean that that means you sell. They even like, lie about the numbers anyway, so like, we'll never know. We're going to talk about that in the next segment because yeah. like, there's nothing faker than trending lists. Like like when you when you open Netflix and it says our top ten trending, and you've heard of maybe one and two. I can't think of of something more obvious that should be transparent. Just for like investors sake, like the numbers on these shows should be publicly available and not Private. filtered and manipulatively worded into something favorable like Rings of Power. Mm-hmm. That ought to be transparent to the audience. Yeah. It's uh, also for this one. It's funny, too, because for, for Aaron Taylor Johnson, somebody in the chat mentioned they think he's too skinny. He'll bulk up. But then Henry Cavill's too like would, nothing Henry, is ever good enough. Right? Daniel yeah, Henry Craig, Cavill would not have been a good. Daniel bond. Craig was actually like the that. perfect size. B- Pierce Brosnan was actually the perfect size. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. I really do, guys. If if you want to watch something interesting, I Golden Eye is maybe is my favorite James Bond movie of all time. But if you go back and you watch Die Another Day and you watch The World Is Not Enough, they're legitimately good action movies outside of Denise Richards being the least like like the least believable nuclear physicist in the history of the world. Other than that, the, they're, they're fantastic movies that are designed to be entertainment. Like, it's really funny. Like, Bond, like, GoldenEye happens. Like, the Cold War is over. They're talking about, they're talking about it's the end of communism. What are we going to do with the fall of the Soviet Union? By the world is not enough. Geopolitics, they're like, it's about an anarchist because they just didn't know what else to do. Like, <laughs> they, they didn't know what else to make the bad guy. Mm-hmm. So it's like, and you get these roles. They're like, in, in Die Another Day, it's about an evil media mogul who controls the news. What's more relevant than that today? Then in Jurassic yeah. World Dominion, you yeah. have like the big tech overlord. Yeah, like, it's like that's kind of what they transhumanism. They, well, they did that with the new Bond ones with Rami Malek's character, supposed to be kind of uh, in, in that realm there. But like mm-hmm. the the real question is, do we keep uh, uh, Ray Fiennes as as M with the new Bond? Because that's what they did with the last one. They they kept when Pierce Brosnan left and Daniel Craig t- took over, Judy Dench remained on as M, and they're like that doesn't really make any sense, but just go with it right like so so what do you do do you keep him do you keep or i'm sorry do you keep naomi harris as money penny or is it just a whole reboot from the top i think you kind of have to do a whole reboot because he'll be younger than naomi harris is now by the time they make that movie hey maybe he doesn't mind given that yeah. his wife is 55 yeah. years that, old yeah he's like they also the, somehow have two children biological children and hey. he's like, what did you say? Five years older than his own stepdaughter. Yeah, he's seven. Kind of wild. He's only seven years huh. older than his than one of his stepkids. Yeah, that's that that's is interesting. Little, little bit. I mean, Hollywood's so unique. You chat, know, chat. I would I would love. I, I've been seeing I've <laughs> huh. been seeing chat like just laying down hilarious. They're like, saying Jordan Jackie, Peterson for Bond, and Jack, the way he saves he the world it. is telling people to clean their room. Jackie Chan is Bond. Like, Peter there, Dinklage is Bond. There is a t- <laughs> there was a time when we were in the colorblind casting age where it actually didn't like when we got Brandy as Cinderella, where we could have very easily ended up with Jackie Chan as James Bond, and I would have been here for it. It just becomes awesome. a martial. It just becomes a Hong Kong action flick, and it's just James Bond doing kung fu the whole time. Let's go. All like, 
of the comments on the article about Aaron Taylor Johnson are complaining, saying, you know, where have the real men gone? What happened to Hollywood? He, Sean Connery was perfect, and now we don't have any they, real men to pick from. Like, woo! thank oh, you. Oh, people get to hear the people sound People from effect. all sides. Finally, oh, it's right loud enough. Party time. P-A-R-T. Why? <laughs> because I... The Thank you, guys. <laughs> um, do, Jim do, do, Carrey. Do, do, do. Jim Carrey as James Bond. Let's that go. body language would be what about Vin interesting Diesel? to watch. That, oh, let's go. The Rock That's is James man. Bond. Like, like, or no? Oh, they could have done. Uh, who is it? Like, who, who's an American? Like, we all know. We all know that British people can fake American accents. Who is a good American actor that can fake? fake oh, oh, who plays Rob, Barry? Uh, oh, what's his name? Robert Downey Jr. could do it. He because he does mm. Sherlock Holmes. Um, okay, so if you, you investigate you things, you're James Bond. No, but I'm Bill saying Hader. I don't. Bill Hader. Bill Hader. Yeah. He could do I it. I don't see it. Rain Wilson. <laughs> Rain. <laughs> what did he change hey. his name to? Rain, like climate yeah, change like, Wilson. He, like, yeah. he became like Rain, I'm a douche canoe. Um, Wilson. Benedict Cumberbatch comes from aristocracy. Yes. He, he would, would yeah. work for He's, the What was that show on Amazon? I, did it get canceled? The one with uh, Rain Wilson about the pandemic? Uh, I didn't even know that he had a show. It was... Um, Oh, it was good, but I don't I don't remember there being a second season. What was the what was the fake interview show between the ferns on Oh, that on was Netflix with, yeah, with, with Zach Galifianakis. Zach Galifianakis. Zach funny. Galifianakis as uh, James Bond. It's just like a bumbling yeah. James because Bond that always has to screws make sense it up. It, well, it doesn't have to make sense anymore. They could they could have Bond in an alternate universe on Amazon Prime where it's just like him like lucking into everything that happens. Like he just screws up con kind of like or what what maybe what they do next is they make live action Archer. Utopia. Oh yeah, I saw that comment. That would be great. Live action Archer. Sterling Archer. Who would do that? Who would be Sterling Archer live action? Who's that much? Oh, what's the word I want to say? Because he's cunning, but he's also just he's kind of a frat boy. Who he is. No, a he's spy. Abs he's absolutely a frat. Yeah, boy. he's a lax and, guy. And, and they've got the uh, what's her Aisha Tyler is actually the the woman who plays uh, what's her name in the show. Uh, the main, Lana. Lana is uh, Lana. Aisha Tyler. Who uh, is is acting and is like she's not just a voice actor. She's she's actually an on-screen yeah, actress. I've so. seen her in other stuff. I forget what though. But also, oh yeah, somebody in the chat says, "How long till they remake the Born series?" That one, mm. that will end up happening, but it's gonna like it's too soon. I feel like you right could now. get another Matt Damon movie out of there as old man Born again, <laughs> and that last Born movie was not that good. Also, it would Born be Born Identity Theft. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Real be called Reborn. Duh. Reborn. Like it'll be called <laughs> yeah, it'll be called reborn. Uh, and, and the funny thing is, like by then, like they'll have to do it, but they'll have to make it without the shaky cam because it'll give him nausea because he's old and it's, it makes him he's sick. He has vertigo. See. Yeah, he's got vertigo. Jason Bourne with vertigo. <laughs> uh, oh, Mads Mikkelsen is a bad guy. He mm. could play uh, a bad guy again. I love Mads Mikkelsen in, in just about everything that he's in. But like, there's there's so many good actors that could do it that I think about it. But like a lot of them, it's like a lot of the actors I love are TV actors, so they're not going to get those roles. They're not like Tom. Meissen is a great actor, but he's a he's a stage and he's a television guy. He's not gonna like a lot of people early on thought Rami Malek could do it, but he's too short. Or I'm mean, sorry, he's too. Uh, he's five nine. Is he? Is, like, is okay. he that tall? Is he? Five, yeah. he, I don't, he, he seems I short. To me. He seems really he seems short. short to me. Like, but he's also skinny. You yeah. Know, well, well, I mean, so. but he they give them time to bulk short. up. They give them time to bulk up. Sure. 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 Thanks for watching this clip, guys. If you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media, links are in the description below. Bye. Bye.